check it out. The underground theater is mostly formed up. I've got two more courses to put on to finish it. I either do the next course as the brick ledge and then do another course or I do a course and then the top one's the brick ledge. I'd rather be lower and good than too high. So yeah, so all the uh, bracings up. There's a couple more. I'm gonna run another couple pieces of uh, scaffolding, a couple other two by eights just to fill in some areas, but that's pretty much done. I staged all the rebar that I needed so I could just reach it while I was up here to tie in. So that went quick and I've already set my four corners up there. So I'll build these, I'll carry them over where I can grab those, set the corners first, pop those in. There's only a couple spots that have to be cut, do everything from up here now, get that layer on pretty quick. And then the top layer and then woo, the only thing that takes a little bit longer on the top layer is those, uh, looks like a laddered metal there that uh, goes in uh, that helps keep the wall straight. And I did a little bit of straightening, but I still, you know, we'll have to do, because I see the little bit in this one, so I have to do the string line and all that. In fact, the final straightening, I notice uh, people are concerned, like on the pool too, with the straightening. So the final straightening happens poor day. So you put the concrete in it, straighten the wall while it's still curing because um, the weight of the wall is going to push some things too. So not to be too concerned. I mean, things that are way out, of course, we go ahead and adjust, but not too stressed with it. So plenty of room for the waterproofers to get in here after pour is done. Those straps all be gone. They'll do all their waterproofing. It's a spray on. Uh, they do a layer and then they come back and knock down any high spots any little loose stuff and then they do another layer and then there's a dimple board that goes on too we'll fill a lot of this with clean number four stone so working my way out of here this is the most confined tough area so i kind of want to start with it and then just build my way out there were some questions actually it's the other side let me go over there so i can show you there's some questions about the straps we did for the T-walls. In the T-wall video, I'll pop up the link to that. This particular strap couldn't be completely flat against it, so people were asking about, you know, does that affect your finishes? This particular one is on the outside, so all this gets filled too. After the pour, if this was on an, it's an exterior wall, so it doesn't matter, but if it was on an interior wall, after the pour, after the concrete's cured, it's still not that much in the world of sheetrock. That's not really a big deal, but if it was causing some interference, you could cut it off and uh, pull those straps off because they're there to hold everything tight during the pour. These, I don't know where this originally came from, but it has been a pain the whole time. We tend to just kind of toss it out of our way a little bit like that, see? That way I can complain about it later. Perfect. So that was by myself and like a day of actual work. You know, I'm getting phone calls and stuff all the time and different things and filming, of course, takes up some time. So yeah, so by myself setting up, it's 18 braces in there and the wall, it's uh, 20, it's roughly 21 by 27. Uh, or 24, something like that. I would put the actual measurement up. We haven't touched any of this. Getting some, uh, Quincy's supposed to be coming today, but if not, Dalton, my nephew, comes tomorrow, and we're gonna jump back on the pool. So usually the ICF comes, uh, Nadura comes packed three forms to each one of these packs. The brick ledge is just two. So see, you got this is one side, so this is where it's more similar to the pool forms. <laughs> and then you got this side, and then we're gonna put the little connectors together in the middle. I've gone over before, but real quick, since we're doing it, brick ledge has this extra part that sticks out and it gets a piece of rebar through here and a stirrup, which are arriving tomorrow, so I'll be able to show you those. And then that's what the uh, brick wall, when the brick in the exterior, that's what uh, it sets on. Or if you're doing real stone culture stone or the stuff that you can just stick on mortar you don't need these particular things for stone real stone that of course is heavier and brick you do 
So let's go ahead and put these together. I'm gonna need eight of them for where I need to put it there. So these are the webbings, all right? They just, doing this one-handed, don't want it to be easier. See, they just slide in there, that's it. And then, so if you wanna hold these two pieces together, you can just slide them in at the same time. And there you go, so that's pretty straightforward. Let's do it. It's a little heavier than the regular form. I mean, I'm still picking it up one-handed, but it's a little heavier, of course, because it's more going on, but. The real supervisor's out here today. What do you think so far? Is it good? Yeah, see? Dog Dog approves. So anybody that doesn't, I mean, Dog Dog overrides you. Yep. So there we go. Facts. All right, so uh, we're gonna do these stirrups, show you how the brick ledge and stirrup deal works. And once we put all those in, then I can go ahead and put the last course on, and then, uh, yeah, the theater will be ready. It'll be waiting for uh, for concrete. So that's what's on the order today, is to get all these little stirrups in and all that. I'll make a decision then. I'm either going to go ahead and do the hallway. Some people noticed that we had stuff going across here and weren't sure what was happening. See the brick ledge? So this is outside, so the brick ledge needs to be there but it doesn't need to be in the wall and it doesn't need to be in the hallway. So I'll cut that back and then we'll have one piece that goes across and finish cutting in our door opening. Then we'll either come out here with this wall and finish. I'm thinking I'd like to have three to four rows and courses on everything so that uh, we can go ahead and set all the bracing up because you usually do it at three. So go ahead and do that while well, I've got somebody strong over here to help me with these heavy braces. The only windows and doors to cut other than right here, all is in that step down area. Yeah, there we go, so let's do it. Wow. What dog dog, you sent something? Huh? You drive through Oh look, it's the drop through window. I'm going to send uh, DD back with you. I know. That's why I did it, because I knew I was coming out here. Huh. Uh, oh. They are specifically written on on whose is who, okay? Look at that. I mean, you can't beat this, right? I huh? didn't even brush my hair yet. Too bad. <laughs> All right. Come on, dog dog. You can, no. She was going for it. Here, let's see if she can jump over the curve wall. Can you jump over this dog dog? Go get her dog dog. Get her dog dog, get her. Go get her. Aww. Oh, go dog dog. You can go through there. Dog dog, come on. Yeah, a $2,000 bet bill later. <sighs> come on, dog dog. Go. Huh? Look at that. <laughs> All right, I made you eggino. Let's go eat. All right, thanks. All right, Love you. you, bye. So you got these stirrups <laughs> that are pretty meant for this deal. And so what happens is that ends up there and you have a piece of rebar that's coming through this end of it. 
And so if the bricklist tries to pull out, it's got to pull through the, all the concrete plus pull on the piece of rebar that's back here. Right? So if you put the rebar in first, you can't do it that way. Right? But, let's see. If I do that, that'd be upside down. That won't work. But let's see if I can do this. Do, 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 do. Yeah, that'll work. So I can just do it that way if I want. Set it on the piece of rebar that's over here. And then that'll be done. So there's one per little spot. <laughs> it's a bunch of them, right? So we set that on all of them. That gives us our strength for the brick ledge. Uh, from here, brick goes up. This is just uh, one wall, so about 10, 11 feet off the top of my head. So probably 11 feet, because actually we'll have another deal here before the floor, so. You know, brick goes up by 11 feet, so we have this brick ledge. And then as we go further down towards the pond, the brick ledge will be a course lower. So, but I'd rather have it a little too low than too high. And I know we're putting about uh, three and a half, four feet of dirt over the top of this area where you see that bundle right there the little, that goes over the hallway. So that's going to bring us up to about there. And then this is, you know, the ground gets higher. So this will be about right for this. And then uh, we'll see how it goes. See, I'm going to set all those in and uh, keep on rolling. I'm actually going to record this one in real time. I'm looking to see if my uh, GoPro is going to fall down in this hole. I think we're okay. All right. Come through here like this. Doo, doo, doo. And I will put one on this end too before it's all done. So what happens is this piece of rebar goes in and the other side of the stirrup hooks behind it. So when you start stacking brick out here, what's it going to want to do? More weight's going to be pushing down on this. So it's going to naturally want to push everything out, but the stirrup, I'll have to, i got to decide how I'm going to do that, but the stirrup sits sits like that and this all be embedded in concrete so it gives support for it wanting to pull that way it's got to pull the, it's got to pull against that it's got to pull this piece and it's got to pull against that piece of a uh, uh, rebar as well yeah I think that's where I'm gonna be. Yeah, yeah. See, and then that lays right there. And then I probably gotta go, I probably gotta actually tie them also.
Yeah, that's all right. I think that's going to be good. There you go. What do you think? Huh? That's one side. That's one. Four more to go. Interesting to learn about. Yeah. All right. So all those are put in place. It hooks around that piece of bar. Comes back to this piece of bar. I'm going to put a tie on it. I'm actually going to uh, hit up Steve and just ask him a question about that. Like, Actually, it's probably on the drawing if I need to tie both sides or what. I mean, it can't go but so far, but still, seems like he would want to, because you know the concrete's going to push on it when it's going in. So it seems like he would want to tie that off. I'm going to verify that. So another option is that you can lay the bar there. Like I said, I don't know if this would be fast or not, but you know, you could do your hooks, right? And see, now you got plenty of room. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this is easier. So lay the bar like this in front of the little notch for the bar. Okay, this one gets a little weird because it's this gets cut right here actually. So, and then you can just slide the whole thing. Remember, I'm doing this one handed. All right. There we go. Ta-da! Now that's in there, and then just like we did on the other one, I'll set these up and then slide a piece of bar in right here which will go all the way to the corner. And uh, we'll be ready to keep rocking and rolling. All right. Whoop, whoop. The underground theater is stacked. So rebar's in. This is the level of the entire basement. So looking straight out that way, that will be the whole level of the basement. So this is how far we have to come out everywhere else. Uh, I've got to build the lintel for this. I'll show y'all that. I don't know if it'll be in this video or not, but it's pretty cool. We'll do that. And I've got to put strapping up the rest of the way on those two common seams. And that's it. And this one is, uh, this area is ready to pour. So we'll just continue doing this the rest of the way out. Can't, I can't see it, but I guess y'all can't. Yeah, the brick ledge. So see how that's, that's how the brick ledge works out, so. Pretty cool. All right, let's keep on moving on. Standing down in it. Now we got to remember this gets 10 inches of gravel, two inches of foam and four inches of concrete. So from where, pretty much where that orange safety cap is, but, oh, and it's over there. <laughs> uh, we come up, you know, 16 inches. So take that into account. But from where the walls are sitting on the footing, we come up six inches. And then that is ceiling height for the basement. We've got rain coming in, so putting up tools and everything. There you go. So that'll be the door. Got to finish framing it out. They're eight foot doors. I've got to think if I really want to do eight foot doors. I guess now's the time to decide, huh? Reason I say that is because it's only nine foot ceilings in here, not 10 because the uh, floor joists come down, you know, they hang over the wall and then they come down inside. So I'll actually probably do like a six inch optimizer block and bring that down some. Yeah, I'm gonna bring those down. Okay. See, even, you know, sometimes you gotta, sometimes you can envision it, but sometimes you have to see it so you can make a decision, but that makes more sense because otherwise it's gonna be right at the uh, ceiling. So I'll bring that down some, that's fine. That's not that difficult. And it's an inside door. So there's a lot of things that need to come in here. And the best way in is for me to put sleeves in before we pour the concrete. So I may actually use that anyway. I may just put uh, a little area up there where I can pass things through that'll be hidden in the ceiling. I've got to think that through. Lots of decisions to be made and things. And you know, some of it just has to happen on the fly. And uh, we tried to design as much as we can and plan, but yeah, it's where we end up. So, all right, till next time, right? Yes, sir. There we go.